a lot of things have been coming together. Um, if I think back to all the work I did on block detection and then RFID and then the knob box and the app that um, did kind of danger early warning systems and now um, a, an app that I've written for automation, all of that's come together and it's made the layout busy in a way that I wanted the layout to become busy. So the class 43 that just went past is a manual train and that's just being driven by the knob box by me um, and there's a super sprinter around on the top deck somewhere as well that I think is just coming around but this class 101 is uh, an auto train and it's come up from the branch platform in the background and it wants to head into the bay platform it's going to slow down now because it can't get into the bay platform because the class 154 is in it however the class 154 has just been triggered by the um, emergence if you like of the 101 onto the onto the the main line so the, the the 101 is coming to a nice stop there waiting for the 154 to come past but of course I've now got and here are the warnings I've got a class 43 coming around towards that area over there where uh, there is points set against it and it's uh, and the, the, the track is occupied so I've had warnings there that, that that's going to happen and the 154 is now making its way around and has actually cleared the anti-clockwise um, uh, line so here I can see 28 the idea of my class 43 if I can just find my mouse pointer I can actually set the points back because they're assigned to it and that can get on the way. Meantime, I've got a, a, a red for the um, for the super sprinter, but I know I'm green for the class 43, so that can head on its way as the 154 makes its way down the hill. The reason why I'm red now on the uh, 127, which is the super sprinter here, is because this double slip is set against it. So I can set that correctly. I can set a set of points down here so that it doesn't drive uh, down the incline. And now my super sprinter is green as well and I can set that on its way too. Now there's going to be more because that, that 101 over there still wants to be in, still wants to get, make its way into the, the platform and, and, and it will do that when it's got the opportunity. In fact, it's all starting now so I might as well stick with it. I've gone to uh, caution again on the class 43 and it's now danger. And we should see yep, the, the having uh, allocated itself and had the points set for it, that class uh, 101 is now um, heading across the double slip and onto the anti-clockwise line, which is why the, uh, the class 43 had to stop. Um, and meanwhile, in the background, the 154 is just about finishing its journey, heading to the, the branch platform. Meantime, the 101 is now off that anti-clockwise line and, and in the, uh, the platform. So I can come over here again, do the same stuff because the points are set against it. So I'm going to, I'm just going to very quickly actually, because I know the super sprinter is going to head there. So I'm just going to avoid danger with that, avoid the, um, the, the warnings. But there we go. The, the, the line ahead is allocated to 28 the class 43 so that can head off again and in the meantime while I've been doing all that the two uh, paces that the two uh, small trains have swapped this one's now in here and that one's parked over there and that one's gonna set off again in um, 30 seconds or so and repeat the whole process and most of it's achieved really through allocation all of this yellow on on the um on on the panel is allocation and so the the app that runs the automated trains allocates sections and i'll go into the, the kind of structure of transits and sec sections later but it it allocates sections to a safe point um and as soon as kind of as i went through in the last video as soon as a, a section is allocated and it goes yellow and it gets the id of the train in in that block then it's locked to that train and any other automated train that's traveling around will not allocate or do anything with any block and it will treat it as danger and treat it as occupied so it will wait until that 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 block has gone from uh, up, from allocated to occupied to to available and so with the manual trains 
um, stopped. I'm just going to run the automation now so I can kind of explain it a little bit better. This is the start point. I haven't started the, the, the app running yet, but we can see on the panel, this is the, um, the, the branch platform and it's got an ID in it of 104, which is the, uh, the class 101. And, and that got, that there is an RFID reader about here. So that got activated then. And here's the Bay platform and exactly the same. There's an RFID reader about here. So when this train came in, it, even though it was being tracked anyway, it was identified as 126, which is the regional class 154. So down to my app, I'm going to click start and that just connects everything up it loads all the config it connects to the roster or it would if i'd actually hit the start button there we go um and, and these boxes populate which means it's 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 ready to go um the the important things really are the the, the roster it's just that's where it's connected to we throttle and it's got a list of the trains destination blocks these are something i'd configured because i realized that and I, actually i'll come to de destination blocks later and these are viable start blocks so it's read every block on the layout and it's looked for ones that have an id that matches to a, a train in the roster so these are my viable start blocks what I've also got here is transits, so I can select an available transit. And again, there are more transits than this actually in the in the config, but these are the only ones that have a start block that um, has a, a, a usable train in it. And when I've selected that transit, just to be clear, it's told me where it's going to start, when it's going to end, and which train it's going to use. Now, direction is something I'm going to have to look into um later for the time being i'm just going very simply in in that if the train is in this block it's facing that way so it wants to go forward if it's in this block it's facing that way so it wants to go reverse and that's all i need to do i'm going to click start transit and if i select the transit i can see all of the the um, kind of the the allocation for that first section up to here has happened but there's no allocation further on because it still can't get into there if it could it would just allocate the whole journey in in one one go so the train has started i can hear it in the background it's just making its way down the back and for its first block it runs in caution i, I just thought it, it it's I'm not in any hurry with automated trains. There's, you know, especially these these little shuttles. So for its first block, just you know, while it's starting up, there's no point in it ramping straight up to to full whack. So um, it's just uh, ramped up there, having exited its 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 first block, and it's uh, it's on its way at, at full speed. Speed is entirely configurable. They're all speed profiled, and I've got um, attributes against the the train's roster entries to say how fast they should go and that's all in millimeters per second so that again with dispatcher it you you, you set what speed step you wanted a train to go at but in my experience one train's speed step 10 is another train's speed step 20 so the calculations sort of work the other way around i set how fast i want the trains to go so they're all set i can't remember what the value is i think it's something like 280 millimeters a second and because they've all been speed profiled, the app then works out what what speed step it should drive them at in order to be that. And I've got three settings in there. I've got one for full speed, one for caution speed and one for crawl, because I like the idea of them when they enter a danger block or their last block, a block that they may have to stop in. I like the idea of them ramping down to crawl as soon as they enter that block. And then, of course, because they're all speed profiled and it's measuring the, the speed that they're at all the time, it, it's got a fairly good estimate. And there's a, um, a progress bar on the app that might be visible on the desktop share that shows how far it's estimating that the train has got through the block. And it's really not bad at doing that. It's fairly accurate. So um, at some point, I'd like I, I, I'm going to add um, that always stalls there, but it's now going to slow down to a crawl and it's going to get to about 60% because I don't have stopping sensors in there yet get about 60% of the, the block and then it'll stop uh, meantime it's triggered this one to, to, to go on its way um, and this one by now should be able to allocate the whole of its journey so it, it will will do that and it will come through because it's configured to do so in the transit onto the clockwise line so that they'll never um, end up uh, head on and it's now passing the uh the the 101 but of course it's now emptied the entire section because it exited the platform and then came over the double slip it's emptied the entire section that the 101 wants 
and therefore the 101 is going to uh, allocate that entire section to itself and once it's done that and, and after it does that it makes sure the points are set for its route because uh, it knows what its route is, it knows what its destination is so it ensures that the points are set to uh, to get it to where it wants to be and it comes in again it's just at caution speed here just because um, uh, there's you know it's about it's it's in its penultimate block it's approaching a, probably a station platform or a yard line so just come in at caution come in nice and slow and it's now gone down to its uh, crawl speed and again what what I'll do here is I'll put uh, stopping sensors uh, further down at a kind of perfect point for um, for all the trains to stop so that then um, they'll they'll crawl along and as soon as they they activate that stopping sensor they'll they'll just stop from their crawl speed and in the meantime the 154 has made its way around the back and it's um, gonna head back back up I liked the idea of putting the branch platform kind of so in a track sense as far away as possible and, and using this this line as a, a, a you know it's really an incline but using it as a branch line also the 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 station isn't symmetrical there's only one um bay platform so i needed somewhere on the layout for any train that that leaves that platform to stop and then come back the other way again which is when i came up with having this uh this branch platform over here it's a good distance in in terms of time it takes um away from from the branch platform and it's a you know it's, it's a good place to just have out to add the the extra track in so that they don't block the incline but i thought it was just a um, a decent place to have a little branch platform that's now pulled in there so again it's gone down to crawl speed and it'll get to about uh, 60 or 70 percent of progress through the block and then it will stop and that then triggers itself to run again um which will of course end up coming onto this this line here and, and, and trigger the other one to go. So it is an endless loop. Um, it's currently set to 30 seconds just while I'm uh, messing about and, and, and debugging. But um, once it's, uh, it, it's all set um, and, and working, I'm, I'm sure that that gap will increase. The other half of it, of course, is the danger early warning and tracking app. And the, the big difference with, with that app is that it, it's um, it's it's only monitoring. It never drives trains. It never sets points. It's and, and it's also configured actually to completely ignore automated trains for reasons I'll, I'll come on to in a minute. So the, the purpose of this app is is to pick up manual trains that are are, are are moving around on the layout and work out what direction they're going in, and then look ahead two blocks of those trains to see if there's any danger, see if there's a set of points set against that train, uh, to see if um, there's the, that the block is occupied to another train, whether it's manual or automated, to see if it's uh, allocated, occupied, whatever. Once it's done all that, if those neither of those blocks are allocated or occupied, it allocates those two blocks to that manual train um, in a way that the automated app can see as well. So that makes sure that the, the, the two blocks that a, a, a manual train is about to head into are locked for that manual train. Its, it's points are, it, it, it points may be set against the train, it'll give me a warning if it is and it, it put the train to, to, to danger and I'll have to fix it, but it still won't allow any other app to allocate that block to uh, a train uh, uh, allocate that block to an automated train say because if that 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 block did get allocated to an automated train the automation app would set the points in that block in favor of the automated train which might may, make the manual train head into a derailment or short so the the whole idea is is that the two work uh kind of synchronized with each other the, the two apps they both allocate blocks ahead of their particular trains and each of them respects allocations that the other one made so that they don't go stamping on each other's toes. I Something else I did with this app actually was to um, write some code that would auto-generate a route between two blocks. 
Um, again, that's something um, Dispatcher doesn't really do. And it's not, when I got into it, actually, it's not the most useful thing to add to a, a layout. But I kind of got interested in it, so I, I, I followed it through to the end. It's kind of based on, someone once told me, uh, if you're in a maze, the easiest way to, to, to guarantee getting out of it is to keep turning left till you can't turn left anymore, then go back one and start turning right. Um, and that's pretty much what the code I wrote for this does. It just keeps going straight on on turnouts until it uh, um, can't anymore. And, and then it, it um, sort of goes back and, and starts going thrown. Um, another um, rule it had to have actually was that it keeps a little breadcrumb trail so it keeps a track of the blocks it's already been through and if it comes across a block that it's already been through then that means that path has failed because it's effectively going round in circles so uh, they're kind of the, the, the two rules and it, in the end it, it, it seemed to, to work. Um, I'll sort of explain these, these, these boxes a little bit. I think this one I'd, I'd explained before. These are the available uh, blocks on the layout that currently have um, IDs of, of trains in them. These destination blocks, these are a, a list of blocks that I kind of, I, I realise there's a lot of blocks on the layout and not many of them actually are, are blocks that I would want to finish a, a transit in. So I just made a kind of a shorter list of, of, of the blocks that are either usually yard lines or, or um, platforms and they're kind of the, 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 the most regular destination blocks. So the general idea would be to uh, go and find, I'm going to take the class 47 which is there and I'm going to take it to no, that's the wrong line. That's why that confused me. I'm going to take it to the, the platform up there. So the, the general idea is it's going to pick that train up from, from there, take it round, bring it up the incline and um, get it up into that, that line there. Now, I, I touched on, on direction before. If I generate this route, in, in the same way as, as it doesn't know what direction to, to, to drive a train in, it also doesn't know what direction I want that train to go in when it's generating a route. So what I've got it to do is, is just generate all the different routes it can find and, and list them here. And what, what I didn't want it to do at that point is just to go off and join, to start driving the train because it might drive it backwards down the... Um, down the, the the yard line and uh, you know clockwise over the anti-clockwise line and all that kind of stuff so i got it to list me all of the available blocks uh, all the available routes sorry in in this box here um and it puts an x see where there's a um, where there's an occupied block that's the, the the block that's got the the branch line station in it so it, it sort of gives me a list i think the first one and it orders them as well by efficiency so the least blocks possible is the first one on the list i think this looks good so i'm just going to click start and make sure my train's going forward uh, it does that by default but it never hurts to, to to do it now we go i've heard some clicks and we should be ready to move there we go Something I realised when I was developing it as well, going back to the whole uh, blocks and sections thing, is most of the time I'm going to be using this because I can't use it to generate a big long journey. I can't do lots and lots of laps. I can't say, you know, come out of the yard, do five laps and then, then go into the station. It's got to be from one location to another. So because of that, and because it's likely to be going over the incline, which again is two directional, one track, I decided it was the, the best idea when it generates these routes to put them all in one section, rather than, you know, if you've got 13 blocks, rather than have 13 sections, have 13, uh, have, have one section with 13 blocks in it. And, and that way, it, it, and you can see here, it, it reserves the entire route of the, the train before it even starts. Um, and make sure that the route's free before it even starts. So it would have just sat there in the, in, the, in the yard and waited for everything it needed to be free. Then it would have allocated it. Then it would have got on with it. Um, I think it's probably, it is making its way up the incline now. I'll come down and follow it because it's not going to interfere with these two trains. So again, it'll be going at a caution speed because these blocks are long and there is a, well, there's a thrown turnout there, for example. So it always goes at caution when it knows there's a, a thrown turnout on the way. It's going to, it, it, it gave me the option of the two routes, either through the, the, uh, the section that's occupied or through the section that's not. It has to offer up sections, uh, routes that, that have blocks that are occupied in them because those blocks might not be occupied forever it might just be you know trains passing through a block that it needs so uh, it can't rule out any 
possible route that's got an occupied block in it because blocks don't stay occupied forever. Anyway, it's heading up the hill. It's nearly there now, really. It's only got to go around the other end. And I'm hoping that all of these, these points have been set for it because they certainly weren't when it started. But here it comes onto the incline. I think it's going to speed up a little bit now because it's got a couple of blocks. Well, there are no thrown turnouts, but it is getting to the end of its journey because the platform's just around here. It's down to a nice caution speed now. It has a tendency, it doesn't like right hand curves this uh, class 47 so it may have a little hesitation on this curve no no not this time now it's entering the platform and again i don't have sensors yet for where to stop so it's just going to estimate 60 percent which probably won't be perfectly on the platform i'm thinking actually with with these platforms to have long train stopping sensors and short trains so each platform really would have four sensors on it i think because they're well this one's bi-directional that one's not so that short trains that are coming into these long platforms would stop in the middle and not right at the end which is where uh, that one would stop um and that's not bad actually that's just over oh, undercut a little bit but that's it that's its journey complete and it's um ready for me to take over now i guess I made a video a while ago where I, I did kind of um, express how disillusioned I was with the whole um, automation thing and, and the, the sort of the, the questioned whether it was worth doing all that work on block detection to, to get to where I was, which was a point where I didn't really want to run any automation because it didn't work the way I wanted it to work. And I understand that these apps are written for different sets of requirements um, and. and you can't expect a piece of software, especially one that's given away for free, to, to just do everything you expect it to do. And Dispatcher didn't. So in adding my own automation onto this layout, and again, it's a, it's a, a compliment to uh, just how extensible and, and connectable to JMRI is that I was able to do this without touching the JMRI source code. Um, all of those web servers, JSON servers, we throttle all those ways of, of, of getting information remotely and um, sending instructions remotely it is why I was able to do it really. Um, but this is what I imagined when I was when I set out on, on uh, the, the block detection journey. This is how I imagined it being kind of the 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 facility to have my trains running I've got my manual trains running there they're on the, the the knob box there and they're, they're just running around in circles actually the automated trains aren't running at the minute but when, when they are you then have that that um, necessity to accommodate them and 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 to take action to ensure that you don't collide and, and that kind of thing and because that's not contrived because before i had this i you know i had those those dmus in the in the, the platforms and i would think to myself i have my manual trains running around the loop and i think to myself right shall i bring that train out to cause myself some some problems so i, so I bring that dmu out so i swap them over to cause myself to have to think a little bit but that felt too contrived and i could never really be bothered to do it so having the thing on a timer now and having those trains do it themselves without me actually interacting with them and then having to react and, and having the that kind of the, the tools to help me react, the cab signals, the noise that, that help me immediately know which trains need to stop and which needs to go to caution, when they can resume. It's really um, added something, I think, to how I play with trains uh, and it will make me more likely to do something which I very rarely do otherwise, which is just come up here, run trains and, and, and not do anything else. But running trains always seems to be the last thing on my list to do when I when I come up here. I'd like it to extend beyond this loft. I'd like to to, to um, make it useful elsewhere, um, have have uses elsewhere. I, I think it needs a bit, a bit more work on robustness till then. Um, and, and I got one or two very far-fetched ideas around that, and um, I just have to see how they come to fruition but right now I'm just going to sit back and enjoy trains I feel like I'm at the end of a very long 
journey through block detection and the apps and RFID and all those things. So I'm going to sit and enjoy playing with trains and then hopefully my focus will go back onto the really scary stuff for me, which is scenery.